मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट इन एनी प्लेस फूड इज सेकेंड बट फॉर मी आई थिंक पीपल नीड टू बी नाइस टाइम Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Just Go with Amreen. Good morning everyone. Today we are exploring Nish and there is a part of Nish that is basically it's historical but it is a very painful past and the worst part about this history that it didn't really happen that far back. It happened less than 100 years ago. It's very important that we remember, remind ourselves and learn from it. and never repeat it and i'm actually not doing this alone one of the girls from the group has stayed back she came to nish so i remembered her plan when i was stuck at the airport yesterday so we are hanging out together time to explore nish So we're just meeting our guide now, and the first stop is Nish Fortress. But before we head there, the first stop is this cute little cafe called Tramvaj, and it's actually a real tram that has been transformed into a cafe. And one of the best things over here they sell is the ice cream. No, sorry, the fruit salad. Yes, but they also have great ice creams uh, out here. I'm not sure if other tours that leave uh, from Belgrade for a day trip in Nish bring you to this tram cafe, but you must definitely not miss this. At least try to have a fruit salad or those ice creams or maybe just black coffee like I did. Nish Fortress is a well-preserved Turkish fortress from the 18th century, situated at the very heart of the city of Nish on the bank of the river Nishava. It is one of the most beautiful examples of Turkish medieval architecture in Serbia. The uh, fortress also hosts um, numerous cultural events. The most famous among them is the Nishvil Music Festival, which attracts thousands of jazz lovers from Serbia and abroad every year. As you enter this Nish fortress, you are welcomed by this gorgeous garden, park, whatever you may call it. It is absolutely stunning and being here in fall the colors of the leaves the trees is just so mesmerizing it's my most favorite season to travel anywhere inside the Nish fortress there is the only mosque preserved out of the 10 mosques erected it is from the ottoman empire time which was built in the 16th or the 17th century it is amazing how well preserved this mosque is and it's probably the only mosque i have seen without a minaret or a dome i come from dubai shopping mall is not my thing uh, because i have a lot of those back home so i don't visit them ever when i go traveling but this was like an underground subway shopping mall there are like 7000 stores down there and it was just never ending we kept walking <laughs> but it was nice um it actually made me feel like i was walking in one of those platinum malls or pratunam mall in bangkok if you've been to bangkok you know what i'm talking about and it looked very similar to that apparently the shopping down there is um way more economical than the Than the street, than the, than the stores on the streets above, obviously. So I'm not sure if you're a museum person. Please let me know if you are. I am not. Archaeological museums not for me. It might be for some of you, but it's not for me. So I was utterly bored. Uh, I couldn't wait to get out of there soon enough. But anyway, from there now we are headed to our next stop, which is why I took the tour in the first place. Concentration camp, which is called the Red Cross Concentration Camp. We're headed there right now. So I'm not sure. Have you been to Poland or not? If you have, let me know. And if you have been to Poland, have you been to Auschwitz, uh, which is also a concentration camp, which, which but which is like five times bigger and ten times more painful to be at? And they have a genocide museum as well. And in this concentration camp, they had not moved almost anything. Everything is as is as it was back then. 
and to stand in that is a, was a very it was a very painful suffocating actually that's the word suffocating it was very claustrophobic to stand there in that presence it was the energy was so toxic so negative so painful so like oh i don't have enough words to describe the feeling and it just feels 10 times worse when you go to auschwitz in uh, poland Although the concentration camp which is now a museum does not only talk about the atrocities and the grim stuff it also talks about about 108 people escaped from this concentration camp and it is one of the greatest escapes from any Nazi uh, concentration camp in Europe ever. However, I know that you don't want to be uh, standing in such a place when you're on your so-called vacation or holiday but this is such an important part of history and it's not historical in the sense of it happened like 1100 in the 1100s or something like we can be like okay people are not like that anymore the fact that it happened so recently makes you it just it's like you out of respect and obligation whatever you just have to be there you have to see it just just as a reminder it makes your heart melt it really does and if you go all the way to the top floor there is actually um, you can see the solitary uh, you know cells where people were kept uh, days together with barely any sunlight or windows or air um, it's really painful and powerful at the same time the next stop is called Skull Tower. I promise this is the last grim place I take you in this vlog. After this, only happy things. The Skull Tower is a stone structure embedded with actual human skulls. This was constructed by the Ottoman Empire in the 1800s after a war. During the battle, the Serbian general uh, realized that they were outnumbered by the Turks and if they were captured, they would be impaled. So he decided to do something uh, suicidal whereby he detonated a bomb inside the Turkish camp killing over 10,000 Turks but as well as the Serbian soldiers. The Turks uh, decided to build this tower with almost 900 plus human skulls as an expression and a warning like a message to the Serbians you know to stop resisting and stop fighting or else there will be more such skull towers all over the country. From the outside, this place doesn't look like much, it actually looks like a small chapel or something uh, which was built much later just as out of respect for these uh, soldiers that gave up their life during this battle. So as promised, done with the grim stuff. Now our guide says he's taking us someplace wow. He doesn't say the name, it's a hidden gem I'm guessing. So we're just on our way to a wow place. Let's go. Are you ready for it? <laughs> well, this is just a viewpoint of this gorgeous river slash mountain slash canyon. I don't know, whatever you may want to call it. I have no idea how to spell or pronounce the village in which this viewpoint exists, but I promise if you come with me on a group trip to Serbia and we are going to niche, this is where I will bring you. So after visiting that truly wow place, it was the first thing I said as soon as I walked up because up until now the entire tour had been so grim and sad and depressing which is what we signed up for. It's not like we didn't know that. This was a great peak. We were not expecting that. But anyway, so now last stop is we are heading to a winery. This is the only winery here. I had googled this place. Uh, we're not doing any wine tastings but we just headed to the winery and then we're having lunch in this place. And that would be the end of the tour. Not, a, not of niche but of tour. So the winery was not exactly a part of uh, the tour that we signed up but this was just sort of an add-on from the tour guide himself. So was the wow place. Look at me. I am so happy. <laughs> just leave me in a winery and that's all I will do. <laughs> Drink wine and dance around. <laughs> uh, by this time we were super famished and we were barely listening to what the guide was saying poor thing. Uh, off to lunch. 
so the serbs are very hospitable by the way that you should know this about them so obviously they were having traditional serbian food and they have these different courses you have to start with salad slash soup or both and then you head to the main course and then dessert since i'm not having sugar uh, we skipped the dessert part we but we had to order some salad and soup as well all in all the food was great the ambience was amazing and i mean just everything was perfect i loved this winery and how cute everything was i generally book all my accommodations from booking.com sometimes or most of the times i hit bullseye and i have this time as well the accommodation i'm staying at is just perfect i mean the size of the place the amenities in the place the location of the place everything is perfect i like to have my own kitchen especially now when i have changed my lifestyle and i like to make my own meals or eat a little healthy yeah i like it and it's like a minute away from the supermarket where i finally went and bought some fruits and stuff yesterday and uh, it's very close to the whole walking street that you see right behind me and ahead of me i will leave the link in the description box below as usual for you to check it out but that was it from nish i am done with all my tours i walked the street everything is done i am very sad i'll be leaving this place soon two nights is more than sufficient people also do day trips here so you're welcome to do that nish is a great place three reasons why you should visit nish one is obviously the history and the culture and all of that but then number two is food there is international and balkan food here and it has tasted the best in nish as opposed to i've eaten anywhere else in all of serbia so if you're a foodie this should be on your list third reason shopping shopping here is far more economical than it is in belgrade or in novi sad that is all from me and i will see you guys next week uh, i am headed to the western part of serbia stay tuned for that one until then take care bye guys cheers I generally book all my accounts. <laughs> I stayed um no.